Welcome. Here's a little question. It looks like a word problem from, from some ghastly math book. So imagine I went on a road trip, and I noticed that for the first half of my journey, I averaged 40 miles per hour. I blanked out on the second half of my journey, but I did notice by the end, for my entire trip, I averaged 50 miles per hour. So the question is, what was my average speed for that second half of my journey? All right, looks like it's fairly routine. But then I think about this for a while, I find I don't quite understand the question. There's some ambiguity. What do I mean by the first half of my journey? Or what do I mean by the second half of my journey? Now, if I think about it, do I mean in time? Like for the first uh, number of hours, I was going at one speed, 40 miles per hour. And for the same number of hours, I mean in time, um, I was going some other speed, V. It was called the second speed, V. Um, do I mean time-wise or do I mean distance? Maybe for the first number of miles, I traveled 40 miles per hour. And for the next same number of miles, I traveled V's miles per hour. Maybe it doesn't matter how I interpret. Maybe interpreting this as half the speed, half the time, or half the distance matters not. So let me work out the uh, this question, answer this question two different ways, and see if it matters how I interpret it. So let's first of all let's talk about half the time. So let's do the time interpretation. I have two halves of my journey: the first half and the second half. And let's suppose for the first half I went some time t, and for the second half I went the same time t. So I'm interpreting in terms of first half, I went t for t hours, second half was also for t hours. Um, I know my velocity here was 40, and my velocity here is, I don't know, I'll call it v. But I can also work out the distance I traveled here. Distance is velocity times time, so I must have gone 40 t miles here, and my distance here must have been v times t. So there is, I've got all the information about what happened on the first half of my journey, all the information about the second half of my journey, and I know overall I went 50 miles per hour. So let's work that out. So my average speed, 50 miles per hour, have to be the total distance I traveled over the total time. Well, the total distance I traveled I see is 40t plus vt, all over the total time of t plus t, 2t. Uh, some t's cancel, so I see that 50 is actually, just as expected, the average of the two speeds for the two journeys. So 50 is 40 plus v over t, quick little bit with particular terms that v, must have been 60 miles per hour. Okay, I guess I'm not too surprised by that. So I guess for the second half of my journey, I went 60 miles per hour so that I averaged 50 overall. But again, that was interpreting as half, meaning half the time. Let's now do the same calculation, but let's now not interpret in terms of time, but let's talk about t in terms of distance. So imagine I was going half the distance at each of these two speeds. So back to my pen. So now we'll have the distance interpretation of this question, distance. Here's the first part of my journey, here's the second part of my journey. Uh, time, not sure. Uh, distance not sh is some distance d, and my velocity here was 40. Here, time, not sure yet. Uh, my distance is also distance d, because I'm going by like half the distance each time, and my velocity here is v, yet to be worked out. Uh, but I do know, now I have a formula for time, uh, time is velocity divided by distance. So here the time is actually 40 over d. Oh, no, what would silly me? Distance divided by velocity. Keep track of my units, Mr. Tandon. All right, and over here, uh, time would be uh, distance divided by velocity, d over v. All right, so I now know the total distance I traveled is d plus d, 2d. I know the total time it took me, d over 40, d plus v. So that means the overall average speed is the total distance I traveled, here it goes, d plus d, all over the total time it took me to do it d over 40 plus d over v. Ugh, oh, much more tricky. All right, so we've got two d on the top and a whole bunch of d's in the bottom. The d's cancel. Do, 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 do. So this is 2 over 1 over 40 plus 1 over v. And I know the answer is 50, because overall I averaged 50 miles per hour. Now that is a very different equation. And in fact, if you work out the fractions, um, I did it on the side because I can't do it in my head, is 200 over 3. That is 66 and 2 thirds miles per hour. That's a very different answer. Before it was 60 miles per hour, now it's 66 and 2 thirds miles per hour. Curious. So it does matter how I interpret what first half means. If I mean time-wise, I get the answer given by literally the average of the two velocities, 40 plus v over 2 is 50. Or if I interpret in terms of um, half the distance, then I get this weird formula, 2 over 1 over the velocity plus 1 over the other velocity is the average velocity. So in some sense, 
both these formulas should be called an average velocity. In fact, both are called the means. Uh, ancient Greeks actually studied means, and they gave this type of mean the name. It's, you know, it's called the arithmetic mean. It's the normal average that most people think of. They called this guy the harmonic mean. And in fact, they called any fraction 1 over something a very interesting harmonic number. So these, these involve 1 over fractions. That's the harmonic mean. Um, so the question is, when you're given a question like this in a math book, you need to ask, which mean do you mean? Do you mean half the distance, I mean equal distances in half, or equal times in half? Uh, just for the fun of it, the Greeks actually identified quite a number of different possible means. Uh, just to give you some fun, fun to think about here, uh, there's something called the geometric mean. And that actually has a nice interpretation. If I'm given two numbers, A and B, I can certainly make a rectangle out of them. But in some sense, imagine I mush this rectangle around, and so it becomes a nice square. So the question is, what square of side length x, what value x, has the same area as this rectangle A and B? Well, quick little arithmetic tells me that x squared needs to A, B, so x needs to be the square root of A times B. And, and the Greeks called this the geometric mean of the two numbers. In fact, they identified something like, I don't know, 8, 11, I should look this up, I'm sorry, I should, should have done that before I made this video, quite a number of these things. So the question now becomes, what properties do you want a mean to have? If you had to invent your own new type of mean of two numbers, what would you like it to be? Well, obviously you want it to be some formula involving the two numbers you're talking about. Uh, most likely, you probably want your formula to always give an answer that's between the two numbers. So if A is the smaller one and B is the bigger one, I guess you always want the mean to lie between A and B. And I guess that's clear from the arithmetic mean it works that way. It's not quite clear from the harmonic mean. You may want to check that. The geometric mean, is that clear or is it not clear that it always lies between the two numbers? And what other properties of a mean might you want? I guess another property would be if you double the numbers, like if I doubled 40 and doubled the velocity here, I'd expect to get double the answer. Um, you can check if you doubled 40 and double the velocity here, you will get double the answer. The geometric mean has that property. If you double one of the numbers, double the other, the geometric mean turns out to be double the answer. So I guess we want something like it has the property that double one number, double the other, always gives you double the answer you had before. Well, there's nothing fancy about number two here. Maybe any number k. The, the mean of ka and kb should be k times what you had before. Are they all the properties you want for a mean? If that's it, so here's a fun game for you. How many different formulas for, uh, of two numbers A and B can you sort of invent that satisfies this property of always lying between the two numbers A and B and having this sort of nice um, homogeneous property of some kind? All right, lots of fun. Thanks so much.